our stream team monitoring is going to go over the habitat assessment. This is an assessment that we do once a year, either in August, September, or October, when flows are the lowest and we can kind of see the stream banks a little bit easier. There are two different assessments. One is a rocky bottom and one is a muddy bottom. So depending on your stream bed, you're going to pick the form that is best for you or for the creek. And so for a rocky bottom, that would be if it's predominant cobble or rock. If it's muddy, it'd be a predominant silt or um, mud, silt or mud um, on the bottom. They're both pretty similar, but there are some differences. So the front page is going to ask for general um, information that you've already collected in your water quality data sheet, like your name. It's going to ask for the stream, the stream name and the site number as well. It's going to ask for the time and the date. It's also going to ask for the weather in the previous 24 hours and then the weather currently. Uh, today it's clear for both. The next page is going to ask for more general characteristics that you've already um, taken measurement of. So the water appearance, we're checking clear for today. For water odor, since we are near Titlow Lagoon here at Crystal Springs, we can sometimes get like a ammonia or a sewage smell sometimes um, just with the slower water um, behind us um, and things uh, decomposing a little bit slower. Also, the wind is carrying that smell to us as well. Our water temperature, which is 16.3 degrees Celsius that we've already calculated earlier. And then our approximate uh, width of our stream channel um, using our tape measure, we found was around six feet and that was um, measured. So the next part that we're gonna go over is the local land use. And you're looking a quarter mile of the site adjacent and upstream of where you are. You're going to check one if something is present or two if it's clearly having an impact on the stream health. So you're not going to check everything if it's not, um, if it doesn't apply to your site. So for residential, we're looking at uh, single or multifamily housing, lawns, if there's commercial. So I checked one um, with single family housing in, a, in our urban area. And then we also had, we're in a park area, so there is a lawn um, on both sides of our stream, pretty close adjacent to where we are. And that's, I would say, two clearly having an impact since it's taken away a little bit of that riparian zone. Our next category is roads, if there's paved or unpaved. Um, with paved, I did check it's having an impact, so we do have a road uh, close to where we are here at the stream. So our next category that we're going to look at in our local land use is if there's construction underway and there's none um, within our quarter mile of our site. If there's agriculture, um, and there's none here um, in our park area. Recreation, uh, the categories are power boating, golfing, camping, swimming, fishing, canoeing, hiking paths. We don't have any of those um, right here in our park area, or at least where we are at our site. And then our other, our last category is if there's mining or gravel pits, logging, industry, oil and gas drilling, trash dump or landfills, we have none of those here at this site. So this local land use is just kind of getting you to assess kind of the land use around your site and how that might have an impact on the water quality. So our next section that we're going to work through with our habitat assessment is our 10 parameters. And this is where it starts to become different if you're doing a rocky or a muddy bottom. We already determined that we are at a rocky bottom stream here at Crystal Springs. So we're going to work through that data sheet, um, but it's pretty similar for the muddy bottom, except when it's talking about some pools um, and more of kind of that slower uh, moving for a muddy bottom stream. Our first parameter that we're going to look at for a rocky bottom is attachment sites for macro invertebrates. Those are aquatic um, insects usually we're looking for in their larval stages and they like to hang out in riffles and the riffle is like the white water kind of bumpy action that you see over a cobble usually in a rocky bottom stream. So we're going to see if we have well developed riffles for that um, parameter and all these parameters range from around 20 to 0 and you're going to determine 
um, which number is going to kind of best fit into those categories for optimal, suboptimal, marginal, or poor. So I always like to start on the optimal end and then work my way to the right if I don't meet that category. So attachment sites for macroinvertebrates, for the optimal you're going to look for a well-developed riffle and run. The riffle is as wide as the stream and the length extends two times the width and cobble is predominant, boulders and gravel um, are common. And so for our riffle, what we're looking at is over here, I'm going to start, this is a good riffle to look at, it kind of ends right here where a lot of our cobble ends and it extends up near where that branch is crossing the stream a little bit upstream of that. So we're looking for and see if that is extends two times the width and if it's the, as wide as the stream. So our stream in some points is around five or six feet. So I would say this riffle is probably um, pretty close to 10 feet um, all the way down. And then it starts, we get into this kind of more of a silty bottom, but we still have a predominant rocky bottom stream here. So taking those factors into consideration, we do have a well-developed riffle. And even downstream of us, we have more riffles. And so, but I'm also considering kind of our silty area too. Um, but I would say um, for the next category, we're in suboptimal. So the riffle is as wide as the stream, but the length is less than two times the width. Cobble, less abundant, boulders and gravel are common. Um, so I'd say we're probably um, between optimal and suboptimal. Um, so I would put this on the low end of optimal at 16. And that's what I'll record off to the left here. Our next parameter is looking at embeddedness of the, of the stream. And this is how much fine sediment is surrounding kind of the living spaces between our cobble that's uh, dominant here. So again, we kind of have two different sections of our creek that we're looking at. We have a more of a silty bottom here, but then we also have a more of a rocky bottom upstream. And so what I'm going to do is get into the creek a little bit more and kind of see, pick up a rock and see how covered that rock was. Sometimes you can tell by the discoloration of the rock. This looks like it was around like almost 50 to 60 percent embedded here in this more silty area in our kind of more dominant Uh, cobble area. This I would say was like 30 to 40 percent embedded. Same for this, I'd say 20 kind of the 30. Submerged logs, undercut banks, cobble, 
large rocks or other stable habitat are found in over 50% of the site. Suboptimal is 30 to 50%. Marginal is 10 to 30. And then poor would be 10, less than 10%. So I'm going to look kind of upstream of where I am, a little bit downstream as well, and see if I see any, um, we don't really have any undercut banks. Um, we do have cobble that kind of are making some slow areas. Uh, we don't, we do have some logs or some branches in the stream creating slow areas as well. Um, I would say we're probably on the kind of low end of sub-optimal. So I would put us at a, and that would be 30 to 50% of the site. Um, so I would put us at a 12. That's how I'll record on the left. Our next parameter is channel alteration. That's if the channel has been straightened at all or kind of some artificial um, uh, changes to it. So optimal is if the stream is straightened um, or if the, sorry, stream, stream straightening, dredging, artificial embankments, dams or bridge abutments are absent or minimal and the stream has a meandering pattern. Suboptimal is if some stream straightening, dredging, artificial embankments um, are, there's little to no evidence of recent alteration. Marginal if artificial embankments are present to some extent on both banks. And 40 to 80% of the stream site is straightened, dredged, or otherwise altered. And then poor is if the banks are shored um, with cement over 80% of the stream site. Um, so we definitely somewhat have a, like a straight stream, but I would say it's just been allowed to kind of take its natural course here through the park, um, coming from groundwater seeps on the Tacoma hill, hillside. Um, we do have a bridge downstream of us, and we have a road uh, upstream of us as well, so we do have some kind of... Um, Kind of adjustments or abutments to the stream that have been made. Um, so I would say we are at um, in a suboptimal around 13. So our next parameter that we're going to look at is sediment deposition, and that's looking at if there's enlargement of islands or point bars within your stream. So an island is a part of the stream bed that is usually in the middle that um, doesn't have any um, vegetation growing on it, but it's usually kind of there that you see it throughout the year. A point bar would be an ex kind of an extension, a little bit of the um, stream bank, again, with more kind of rock flowing down or sediment that would um, collect in that area. Sometimes there can be um, plant life growing on that point bar. So we're looking at percentages, so optimal would be little or no enlargement of these islands or point bars and less than 5% of the bottom affected by sediment deposition. Uh, Suboptimal would be some new increase in bar formation, mostly from coarse gravel, 5 to 30% of the bottom affected, slight deposition in pools, marginal is moderate deposition of new gravel. 30 to 50 percent of the bottom affected um, and there's moderate deposition in pools and then for our pores it's more than 50 percent of the bottom affected pools are almost absent due to um, substantial sediment deposition so for us since we do have a narrow kind of stream here i'm not seeing um, really any point bars or islands um, around here uh, we don't really have a whole lot of pools um, to look at either. We do have um, some more like embeddedness, which we already took care of in a previous parameter. Um, so I would probably put us in the um, optimal category around a 18. And that's what I'll record um, on my left of my data sheet here. 
So next we're going to move through our last five parameters on the back side of our um, habitat assessment sheet. And so our next one we're going to look at is stream velocity and depth combination. Velocity is um, the uh, how fast or slow the stream is moving and then of course depth as well. And so optimal is if we have uh, four combinations of that velocity and depth. So we're looking to see if we have a slow and deep section. Uh, slow, shallow, fast, deep, and then fast, shallow. And suboptimal is if we only have three of those. Marginal would be two. And then four would be if we only have one of those combinations present. So we're going to look at our stream here. Our stream is pretty narrow and shallow. And I don't really see any deep areas. So I definitely think we have a slow, um, or we have a slow, shallow area, um, probably off near kind of the edge of our um, stream here, and especially where we've um, collected twigs and things like that. And we definitely have a um, a fast, shallow um, over our cobble areas, and then downstream of us as well. So I would say we only have two of those combinations present here at Crystal Springs. We don't really have any deep areas, just kind of the nature of the stream. And so we would be in that marginal category of, of only meeting two. So I would put us at a 10. Our next parameter is our channel flow status. And this is if the water is reaching the base of both lower banks and minimal amount of channel substrate is exposed and a substrate is just your stream bottom and so that would be optimal if there's a minimal amount exposed suboptimal is if the water fills greater than 70 per 5 75 percent of the available channel and less than 25 percent of the channel and substrate is exposed marginal would be if the water fills 25 to 75 percent of the available channel and then four would be very little water in the channel and mostly present in standing pools. And so looking at this stream, I'm not seeing a lot of substrate exposed against a narrow stream. We do have cobble that's kind of sticking up, um, but I would say if the water is reaching both lower banks, no amount of substrate is exposed. I would put this at an 18. Our next parameter that we're gonna look at is our bank vegetative protection score. And this is where we start to score each bank separately. And we determine the right and the left bank by facing downstream. So I am standing on the left bank right here. And then our right bank is across from me. So just face downstream and left, right. So we're looking at for optimal if more than 90% of the stream bank surfaces are covered by natural vegetation, including trees, shrubs, other plants, um, vegetative disruption through grazing or mowing is minimal or not evident. Almost all plants are allowed to grow naturally. Suboptimal would be 70 to 90% of the stream bank covered by natural vegetation. Marginal would be 50 to 70 and then four would be less than 50. So now I'm gonna score our uh, left bank here. And so considering that we do have a lawn um, coming up to our stream bank here, but we do have a good mix of uh, plant life, I would probably put us in the upper end of our suboptimal at eight. So next I'm gonna score the right bank. Very similar to our left bank, we have a lawn and parking lawn on the other side that's cut in a little bit but we still have a good mix of vegetation we have our thimbleberry we have our salmonberry we have cedar we have maple and alder but we still have a mix of kind of our bindweed and our himalayan blackberry in here um, so i will kind of score pretty similar to our um our right bank i'll do it at eight upper end of our sub optimal all right, so our next parameter that we're going to look at is our conditions of our banks and seeing if erosion is present. 
So optimal is if there's if the banks are stable, no evidence of erosion or bank failure, little potential for future problems. Suboptimal if it's moderately stable, small areas of erosion. Marginal is if it's moderately unstable, up to 60% of the banks in areas that have erosion, high erosion during flood. And then four if it's unstable, raw areas, obvious bank collapse or failure. So I'm going to look at our left bank first. I would say just because we are in a park area, it's easily accessible. We do have areas that are more eroded because of, of trails down to the stream. And so I would say that we are um, moderately stable, small areas of erosion um, are present or some are moderately healed over. So I would say we're suboptimal seven for a left bank. For our right bank, we're a little bit better, um, less, fewer trails down, though we still have a kind of lawn area up there. I would say for our right bank, so we're a little more stable. I would put this in the kind of the optimal kind of low end at a nine. And then our last parameter that we're going to look at is our riparian vegetative zone width. So we're looking at a riparian zone on each side, and that helps us determine if the bank is uh, well protected, receiving shade, stable. Plants act as a um, filter uh, for any pollutants, and those riparian zones are really important for our stream health. So that is for the left bank for our uh, vegetative zone width. And so optimal is if the width of the zone is greater than 50 feet. No evidence of human activities like parking lots, road beds, clear cuts, mud areas, or crops within the riparian zone. Suboptimal is 35 to 40 feet of our riparian zone. Marginal is 20 to 35 feet. And then poor is less than 20 feet. And so like I've mentioned, we definitely have a lawn area in, here in our park that's really cut into our vegetative zone here. And so I would say on our, definitely on our left bank here, we are less than 20 feet um, to that grass area. So I put this in the one for our left bank. So next we're going to score the right bank. And so I still think um, for this one even, we still have a lawn area just right on the other side of these trees. So I would say we are less than 20% um, or less than 20% for our riparian zone. So I would put this at a one for this one. And so now we've completed all of our parameters. So you take the other side of this sheet, you add all those parameters up, even um, individually for the left and right bank scores. Don't average those, so just add them right um, all up. And then on our back side, what you're going to get at the end, you're going to add those up, divide by 200, um, and then convert that decimal to a percentage. And you're going to get um, a percentage that's going to fall either in a um, excellent category, a good, a fair, or a poor. And between those percentages, there's some gaps. So what you want to do is consider the overall site habitat assessment results and your chemical data that you did from your water quality data sheets to determine. So excellent would be if it's comparable to the best situation to be expected within an ecoregion, excellent overall habitat structure, um, conducive to supporting healthy biological community. Good would be if the habitat structure is slightly impaired, diverse and stream habitat generally well developed, some um, degradation of the riparian zone and banks, small amount of channel alteration may be present. Fair would be loss of habitat compared to the reference point. Um, habitat is a major limiting factor to supporting a healthy biological community you can reference what an excellent stream would be. And then a poor would be if there's severe habitat alteration at all levels. So depending on our score, we're going to fit into one of those categories. And then there's an extra room for any comments that you want to add. And again, at the very end, we'll show this completed data sheet um, with all the calculations filled out. 
Okay, so this is the Streamwalk Habitat Assessment. So this is only done once a year, usually around late summer, early fall, just before the end of the water quality year. So first thing you want to do is write in your stream name, your site number, both of those you should get during your first site visit. And then of course, write your name. In this case, you are an investigator. Uh, the date, the time, and then the first thing that you have to think about here is the weather in the past 24 hours and the weather today. So the weather in the past 24 hours was clear and sunny. There were really no clouds at all. Uh, and the weather today uh, was also clear and sunny. This is our general characteristics page. Uh, we went through most of these with Belinda in the video, but for water appearance, we've check marked off clear. For water odor, we've marked off sewage uh, and other. When we check off other, we want to usually leave a little bit of a note there. You can also leave those towards the end of this uh, habitat assessment sheet on a blank page if you don't have enough room. Water temperature, we recorded at 16.3 degrees Celsius. Uh, and our approximate width of the stream channel, we measured to be about six feet. Um, and we check off measured because we actually had the tape measure with us. Now we're on to local land use. So this is pretty much anything within about a quarter mile of the site that you can see. And sometimes here in the case of traffic. So land uses in the watershed uh, can potentially have an impact on our stream. So we're going to check one if it's present or two if we can clearly see or know that it has an impact on the stream. So for our first category here, residential, there are single family houses near the stream, but they're not directly on the stream. So we'll say a number one here. Multifamily housing, we didn't see anything particularly, so we're just gonna leave that one blank. Now definitely there's lots of lawns around, including within the park. So we're gonna say two that that definitely has a direct impact on the stream. And as for commercial or institutional, uh, we didn't see anything particular. For roads, uh, there's of course a paved road and a bridge right next to the uh, park and over the stream in fact, so we're going to give that a check off a two. Unpaved roads, the area pretty much has all paved uh, roads next to it, uh, so we're just going to leave that one blank. For construction underway, uh, there wasn't really anything that we could hear other than, of course, in the background of the video, you could hear uh, various neighbors just tinkering on their vehicles and such. So we're just going to leave all these blank because there wasn't any housing, commercial, or uh, bridge construction repair, anything like that. For agricultural, we're pretty in a pretty urban setting here. There wasn't any grazing land, definitely no feedlots, croplands, or inactive agricultural lands. So we're just gonna leave all these blank here. For recreation, power boating, golfing, camping, swimming, hiking paths, uh, there wasn't anything particularly right next to the stream that we were on. Uh, so we're just gonna leave those blank for now. Um, and for other, there definitely isn't any mining, logging, industry, oil, trash dump, landfills, anything like that. This is kind of the meat of the habitat assessment here. So there are 10 parameters in total, and we're gonna go through just the areas that we highlighted during the video. So for this first one here, we have the attachment sites for the macroinvertebrates. We said that it's about you know, 16 lower end of optimal, higher end of suboptimal. So we wrote that here in our score, put a 16 there. Next we have embeddedness. So we said it's about on the lower end of suboptimal, higher end of marginal, so about an 11 here. And in this case, we had, you know, fine sediments that were pretty much close to 50%. Um, so that's why it's on the lower end of that. Uh, shelter for fish. We were looking at, you know, there were a couple of snags and submerged logs, you know, not, not the greatest shelter. So we said it's a little bit better than uh, the bottom of suboptimal. So we put it at 12. For channel alteration, uh, there wasn't too much straightening or anything, but it definitely had some 
you know, changes at some point brought on by humans. Uh, and of course there was the bridge there. Uh, so we, we put it about in the middle of about 13, so middle of suboptimal. For sediment deposition, while there was some sediment deposited, we gave it a higher score due to no enlargement of point bars or islands. So what I like to do as well is, so I don't have to reference this all and add it up again later, I add up just this page and put the number at the bottom. So in this case, it added up to 70. So for number six here, stream velocity and depth combination, uh, there is only two of the four depth combinations present, so we put that at a 10 there. We have channel flow and status as our next parameter, and it seemed that the water reached the base of both of the banks, so we put that at about an 18, so it's looking pretty good. So right in the optimal area. Uh, the bank vegetative protection, uh, so there's two different scores here. You want to do one for the left bank and the right bank. So for the left bank, we said it was about an 8, the up upper part of suboptimal. So 70 to 90% of the bank is covered by natural vegetation. And then we said the same for the right bank as well. So we will add both these together towards the end. And next on this parameter list, we have condition of the banks in general. And for the left bank, it was moderately stable. Um, it would, had a lot more pathways or rather areas where people had walked to see the stream a bit better. So that brought it down to about a seven, middle of suboptimal. And then for the right bank, quite a few less paths down into the area. So it was a little bit lower end of optimal. And last but not least, we have the riparian zone, uh, the riparian vegetative zone width. And for both, it was pretty small in the bottom, width of definitely less than 20 feet. So we gave both of those a one. So there was some buffer there, but not much at all. So adding all of these up, including both scores for left and right banks on parameters eight and nine, that was about 45 points. We're at the end of the habitat assessment. So I've already written down the 70 from the first five parameters and the 45 from the second five parameters. And then all we have to do is add those together and then divide by two. And that'll give us our percentage, which is in this case, 57.5. Now, all you have to do last here is check this score table here. And 57.5 just skirts in at poor which means severe habitat alteration at all levels. So one thing to note is that we're pretty close to less than 58%. So keep in mind, if your score falls between ranges, consider the site's habitat assessment results, chemical data, if available, in making your decision. Now in this case, considering how often Titlow Park is used and the fairly urban setting, that has propped up in the area over the years, I would say it's a fair bet that we could just mark it off as poor. Now, of course, in this, you wanna put any comments you have on this blank here, or of course you can put it on the back page if it's blank. And in this case, since we recorded the video, we don't need to put any comments here, but stuff like, well, we might've seen some waterfowl or there were lots of crows around, which there are many crows at Titlow Park, something you might want to add in that could give a little bit more uh, idea as to the conditions of the stream.